ladies and gentlemen, this is the Brock Lawley program. Good afternoon. Oh, I want to do a little waxing poetic about this hunting season, gentlemen. I know you know it, and, and I suppose ladies. You know, I didn't meet female hunters until I moved out to Ohio, so you learn something new every day. But apparently you girls like to hunt out here, put down some big buck. But anyway, I enjoy it. You know, uh, let me let me just, you know, I have some dialogue on hunting, so I'm going to do it. Uh, I, I, for one, hunting's fun for me because my aesthetics, you know, I, 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 I'm in the arts and, and I look the part most of the time. And so when people, uh, see me, they, they stereotypically don't think hunter. So oftentimes I'll find myself in society. People will just start cutting into hunters. You know, they'll lay into them. They're rednecks. They're no good. They're, they hate animals, all this kind of stuff. And I just kind of sit there and take it all in and then I lay it on them that I also like to hunt and I do admit that I don't know that it would have necessarily resonated with me if it wasn't for my father my father took me as a boy and my father wasn't the most talkative man he wasn't like me he wasn't jabbing left and right and gabbing rather he was uh, a quiet man but it was an interesting time as a boy with him it was a great time to spend time with my father learn uh, vicariously and hands-on learn he taught me how to handle a rifle he taught me how to tracked deer. He taught me uh, to appreciate the stillness and to just quiet myself. You know, uh, oftentimes I don't think hunting is fully understood to the non-hunter. It's it's a beautiful thing. Think about the hustle and the bustle of our lives. The way that we live our lives is just no pause button, right? And I don't necessarily think man was was made to do that. I think that the still and the quiet does something to the to the mind, body, and the soul. And I've experienced that to be true. You come out early in the morning. You get out there before the sun even comes up. It's quite beautiful. It's still, you can listen to things you never hear. Sun comes up, uh, takes your breath away. You kind of find that twilight time where uh, dark and light are kind of dancing. It's, it's a beautiful thing to see. And then, you know, you kind of see nature does its thing, puts on a little bit of a show for you. That's quite a thing to experience. And I assure you, you don't experience that looking at your Xbox or driving down the highway with coffee spilling in your lap to get to your nine to five. It's something quite special. And really, whether you get something or not, you know, is, is not really the point for most hunters. That's obviously wonderful. And in today's economy, I can tell you this, my wife and I are, are not rich. Filling our freezer is, is literally a couple hundred dollars in the bank. And I know you guys know what I'm talking about. So it's always been interesting to me when I was in college, uh, every professor, uh, Every professor seemed to gun for me. Bear in mind, I was in the Air Force, and I had been doing tours of active duty in in Iraq while I was in the Air Force, and I was a conservative, and I wrote for the paper. So you can imagine how I was not the most popular man on campus. I went to a very, very liberal school, and I studied media. So they would always kind of target me, and every year, hunting season, they would like make this example of me. And, uh, you know, they would fire off all their things. And the, the, and the go-to question I would always say is, I will adhere to these and I will subject myself to these lectures as long as the person giving me the lecture doesn't themselves eat meat. Is it not an, an, iron, an, an ironic thing in our society that people have no problem going to the grocery store buying some burger that some other guy had to deal with? And the, the cognitive dissonance that we have as a society, I mean, you'd be surprised how many people really think it's barbaric to go out and harvest your own food in the woods. To me, I don't think you could do anything more in, environmentally adherent. I mean, you're going out there. And talk about free range. You know how you go into the Chipotle and there's free range and the hipsters all go in there and they think they're doing something real good because they're eating this free range. They're not eating the non-free range. They're eating free range. By the way, I don't even know if that's true or not. I'm not saying it's not true, but who knows? You could just hang a sign up there, I suppose. Either way, I don't know that you can get any more free range than, than deer running free from fawn to buck. I think that's about as free range as you get. So the whole thing's just a mystery to me. It just goes to show you that our moral compass is broken. You have no wisdom in this society. People are so detached from reality. I don't know where they think their food comes from. I have no idea. Maybe it just falls off the food tree in their mind. But nonetheless, in my lifetime, I've had to endure way too many lectures on hunting, a thing that are certainly our forebears did. And you might be able to make a case too, fathers and sons. This might be like one of the last time honored traditions where, you know, a father and his grandfather and his great grandfather all did this. And this was sort of a passing of the baton. Think about it that way, a, a way to pass on things that are much more rich than just the experience of hunting stories learning experiences how to turn a boy into a man all things i would argue are missing from our society and maybe it's because we're totally removing avenues like hunting in order to do that 
And and that leads me to something else I wanted to talk about. I have been struck by the I do a lot of mentoring. I do have a lot of young boys. And I think the way that you, you do that, young men, is you spend time with them. And it's monkey see, monkey do. And you kind of show them, first of all, how to treat young ladies, how to conduct themselves in society, all these different things, how to prepare themselves to be husbands and, and all the things that I think young men should be aspiring to be. And I would argue that that has completely completely gone away in our society by and large you see aimless young men struggling for an identity that they don't even know what it even supposed to be i mean look at all the competing interests uh and the competing definitions of of what a young man's supposed to be what manhood's supposed to be i mean talk about being dizzied talk about not being able to find your your masculine uh equilibrium I mean, even to try to define something like that anymore is like offensive to people. But perhaps these type of things, hunting, mentorship, these were things that we would do to, to, you know, move a young man through the seasons of life. I'll tell you this, something that's very, very disappointing to, to me. The majority of young men, and I mean this, I'm not exaggerating for hyperbole's sake. The majority of young men I know no longer want to get married. Not like had tough experiences or didn't meet the right person. All those things are just life and everybody has to deal with that. But I'm talking about have no desire to get married. And as I talk to them, they, they, they walk me through their reasons. Well, the reasons is why would I ever want to do this? I mean, women, uh, kind of give them what they want anyway. I would argue it's, it's, you know, it's that whole milk cow analogy. I've never gotten that right, but it's something to do with milks and milking and cows and some horrible analogy about women in that respect but it's got something to do with that right you've got uh women that pretty much i suppose act like wives for these guys who have no intention of marrying them and i would argue that's i i'm gonna just boldly say that's a lack of maturity and and i'll I'll go further that's a lack of an understanding of what a man is because think about it when you move through these seasons of life each of them are teaching you something I would argue marriage, to some extent, teaches you a little bit more selflessness. You have responsibility for things beyond yourself. That teaches you uh, characteristics that are very, very important to what I think masculinity should be and what I think manhood should be. And a lot of the avenues that young men would learn these things through, one of the the last existing, I, I would argue, one of the last existing sort of frameworking in our society for this is sports. And I and look around you. Athletic sports, competitive sports, violent sports under attack by our society. I don't think that is even debatable anymore. Every squawking head has some, has some two bit opinion on why we should no longer have this. All of this, I feel an attack on masculinity. I think you can make a comparison with hunting and sports and many other uh, uh, avenues to turn boys into men. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be back. Brock Lawley music.com. Check that out. And WMANFM.com. If you want to chat with me, if you want to fill my ear, 419-529-1400. This is the Brock Lawley program. We'll be right back. Brock Lawley Show. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Brock Lawley Program. We're back. Uh, check out CourageCulture.net. That's where you're going to find all the show prep, everything I'm going to cover today, just in case you want to recap. Sometimes things will fly up on your radar and interest you. And I know we've had a tough week, right? The nation has seen some things that are disheartening. We've had Ferguson riots. We've had people burning down cities. And I'm going to have a friend of mine, Rondell Jordan. Rondell is a great guy. We don't agree. We disagree politically, and we certainly disagree on this issue. But Rondell's a thoughtful guy. I think a lot of him, and I, I thought it would be good. You know, I don't necessarily like that some of the talk radio that I listen to is just constantly pounding the drum. Listen, the United States of America, what I love about it is different people have different views. I happen to still be a holdout that we're stronger for that. So Rondell is going to come on, assuming that he, uh, he makes the phone call, which uh, he assures me that he will. And we're going to kick this one around. I assure you, we don't agree, but I think that's the better for the audience to hear that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's that time of year again, and I just feel compelled to talk about this. Many of you might not know this because I don't talk about it as much, but I started social commentary with a YouTube channel. And I, I can assure you, your young children and your kids, your impressionable kids, they're gleaning a lot of their worldview via YouTube. It's amazing the ratings this thing gets. Well, anyway, I started a YouTube channel in response to what I think was the defamation, the slander, 
uh, of my faith. Christian faith is, is getting a black eye and a bloody lip on the internet, and that's to say the least. And the channel's called The Atheist Antidote Show. I, I put out a video. The thing went viral. At this, you know, I, it started me going, and I started making videos. Now I made 150 videos on this YouTube channel where I have thousands of subscribers, and I encourage you to go check it out. Um, I think you'll find interesting commentary, whether you agree with me or not. I'm going to break stride real quick, and I'm going to take this phone call. This is Brock Lawley Show. What can I do for you? Uh, hi, this is Teresa Davis. Yes, Teresa, can I intro you real quick? Teresa is a family counselor right here in Mansfield. In my opinion, the best there is. And she's also wise and, and such a thoughtful woman. And I, I, I consider her a chance to clean up the mess. She, she cleans up the mess that I make with my mouth by way of uh, my chauvinistic ramblings. <laughs> but, but, Teresa, last segment I talked, about, um, I talked about manhood and I talked about the threats to it in our society. I talked about how important it is uh, that we have these avenues to pass the baton, the traditions. Uh, what do you think about that? Did you happen to catch that segment? I sure did, um, and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it very much. And one of the things I can say to you is having raised four boys, I will tell you that it's very, very typical for them to like to, to do things like you describe with guns and all of that. My boys <laughs> made guns out of pork chop bones or toast. <laughs> they would always be doing things like that, so that was very typical for them. Um, and I'll go from a di- little bit of a different angle. I think that uh, not only have um, things like you mentioned sports, I think, and um, hunting and things like that. But also, I think we women are to blame for emasculating our men. Um, we have a lot of power, but I think we're misusing it. I think that our power can be used uh, better uh, to build our men up and I guess maybe to make them feel strong and uh, like providers for us. And uh, so I think we use our we use our powers a little bit in the wrong way. And we're going in the wrong direction with our men, I think. I think so, too. And you hear this, this it's a very tug of war thing in society, because uh, on the one hand, y- your ear is filled with all this stuff about how uh, the woman faces great threats in the society, right? They face financial glass ceilings and so on and so forth. And, and, and they, and, and a part of our, a segment of our society, I would argue that that would be like more of the feminist. Right. Uh, they, they, but then on the other side, we, we hear lamenting of where are all the men? Where are all the marriable men? There seems to be this real Jekyll and Hyde attitude towards masculinity in our society. And, and what do you account for? You mentioned that women have maybe wielded that power. I agree with you that femininity has a lot of power. What, what do you mean? Do you mind elaborating? on that? I'm curious. Well, I think um, in some ways we want to be uh, the strong one. We want to be the one who makes the decisions. We want to be, um, I think in the short run, we feel powerful when we do that. But in the long run, we have missed uh, the opportunity to build up our men into something strong and good that will ultimately be a beautiful thing for us, if that makes sense. I just had a conversation about this recently with my daughter-in-law, and it was a really good conversation. Um, I think that we are able to be strong in a way that is not, gosh, I think it's sort of counterintuitive when we think about strength. Our strength comes from uh, just understanding relationships, understanding emotions, understanding how good we are as women at verbalizing things, explaining feelings, explaining right. things, and men, um, that's not, that doesn't come natural to them. I think we, that, we can use that to either hurt them or help them. I think that's so true, and one of the things I have been so blessed with is a wife that, that balances me, that, yes. that really, and I, and I think it's such a sad thing in our modern society that, that we are seeing masculinity and femininity, depending on the context, looked at as a threat when really it's such an enhancement to our lives, oh, yeah. such an enhancement to us as people. I don't know how these forces have manifested in society, but, but, I, but I certainly see the fallout all around us. And it seems like we just keep doubling down. It right. seems like we just keep doubling down. Certainly it's not working. You know, you look at the divorce rate, you look at relationships, and, and, and certainly you see a, a whole train wreck situation, but we just keep, keep going the same direction. I, I don't know why. I, 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 <laughs> I don't. Well, I teach. This is one of the things that I. It's the end of my semester in teaching, and this is the one of the, one of the things that I left my students with. There's something called the principle, the the law of enlightened self interest, and and I I think this speaks to what we're talking about here, and that is that if we actually focus on the other person in our relationship, we, so we would focus on what it means to be a man and help them to be a man. 
um, in a sense, we are going to be helped to be strong women in, in return by our focus on them. Does that make sense? Makes like so much sense. The law of enlightened self-interest is the more I focus on uh, the masculinity of my husband, the more he will focus on my femininity and what I bring to the relationship. So, like you said, we're doubling down in the wrong direction. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you see why uh, Teresa is such a...